everybody. Welcome to Poetry and Props. Um, I hope you have had some wonderful days at home and that you've been tuning in every day is what I'm hoping. If you haven't, totally fine. You can hop on board today. Um, but if you've been tuning in, you have a quite a few poems tucked in your pocket by now. If you want to go back to the beginning and start um, and do them with us where we kind of worked into each one, that would be great too. So remember, whenever we do poetry, we're storytelling. We're working on um, how our voice sounds. We're like pretending we're talking right to an audience. You probably will have an audience. I just have a camera. But you want your face, your eyebrows, your different tones in your voice, your intonation, you want your hands going. And if you can make some props at home, that's even better. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So if you can't, that's all right. We just do things with our hands that make people believe we have one there. So here we go, this one is called One Inch Tall. If you were only one inch tall, you'd walk beneath the door, and it would take about a month to get down to the store. A bit of fluff could be your bed. You'd swing upon a spider's thread. You'd wear a thimble on your head if you were one inch tall. You could surf across the kitchen sink upon a stick of gum. You couldn't hug your mama, you just have to hug her thumb. You'd run from people's feet in fright. To move a pen would take all night. This poem took 14 years to write, because I'm just one inch tall. Good job, that was terrific. That is a fun one to do at the beginning. I'm just gonna do a few for you. Um, and then in the middle, we'll do some that we know or are really getting to know. And at the end, we have a couple brand new ones that we're gonna be learning. All right, here goes our wormy. So I put up here for a prop. So the other one we're gonna do is called Remoto Dad. And for this one, you can just borrow the remote control out of your living room. And this one says, Remoto Dad. It's just like a TV remote control, except that it works on fathers. You just push the thing that you want him to do, and he does it without any bother. You want him to dance? Just push five. And then the, your person who's with you, maybe your brother, sister, mom, they're supposed to go, You want him to sing? Push seven. La, 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 la. If you want him to raise your allowance a bit, simply push 11. And then they're going to hand you some pretend money and go, Here you go, son. And you're going to go, Oh, thanks, Dad. You want him quiet? Just hit mute. And at this point, your person that you're doing it with is going to go, pretend they're talking, but they're on mute. 14 will make him cough. <coughs> you want him to stop picking on you, yelling and telling you what not to do, stop bossing you for an hour or two, simply push power off. And then the person that you're, person you're doing the poem with, they just go, Meow. like you just push the power off. It's fun to have somebody to do it with. They don't have to know any of the words. They just do the actions that go with it. So when you push, you know, number five will make them sing. They have to do the singing. When you push it for coughing, they have to do the coughing. So it's a super fun one. This is one of the ones that we'll memorize um, coming up in the next weeks that we have. All right, let's do a few that we already know. How about <clears throat> somebody has to go polish the stars? When we do these, I hope you're going, oh, yes, I know that one. Know that one totally. Somebody has to go polish the stars. They're looking a little bit dull. Somebody has to go polish the stars. For the eagles and starlings and gulls have all been complaining. They're tarnished and worn. They say they want new ones, but we cannot afford. So please, get your rags and your polishing jars. Somebody has to go polish those stars. That's a really good one, too. <clears throat> All right, put my polishing jar back up here. If you have a jar, that's great. Have a rag, you could use a tissue, you could use a, anything that you could use for a rag. Or you can make people pretend, believe that you have a pretend one in your hands. So our next one we've been doing is gum eyeball. <clears throat> and for this one, you need to have um, a shocked look on your face or 
whichever shock look you want. And then you gotta say like, oh my gosh, there's an eyeball in the gumball machine, that's disgusting. So first come up and pretend you're gonna pay your money. Your mom said, oh hey, here's a quarter. Go get a gumball. So you come walking up, La, da, 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 da. you go to put your quarter in, and there's an eyeball in the gumball machine, right there between the red and the green, looking at me as if to say, you don't need any more gum today. Great. Hopefully you have that one down. <clears throat> Each time you do it, it's going to sound different, which is the best thing about it. You can try all different kinds of shocked faces. You can do different things with your hands. The only thing you want to do um, is pretend when you're looking at the gumball machine, make sure you're looking at the audience when you're doing your talking. Don't just stare at the gumball machine. All right, let's try it again. Here we go. -da 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 -da. Turn the, oh, there's an eyeball in the gumball machine, right there between the red and the green, looking at me as if to say, you don't need any more gum today. Good job. Woohoo! You're getting some great poems under your belt. Okay. How about <clears throat> treehouse? This is one, unless you have a tree, um, you don't really have any props to do it with. You want to have a dreamy voice, like, oh, I would love to live in a treehouse. And then you also want to have a practical voice, like, what? A street house? A neat house? Be sure you wipe your feet house. So um, have that voice. So here we go. A tree house, a free house, a secret you and me house, a high up in the leafy branches, cozy as can be house, a street house, a neat house, I'd be sure you wipe your feet house. That's not my kind of house at all. Let's go live in a tree house. Good job. Big clap for Mrs. Colby. All right, so we worked yesterday on homework machine. Today we're gonna to go over and work on dark in here. And remember this one <clears throat> is about a little girl or boy who got um, too close to the lion's cage at the zoo and they um, got eaten. So they're writing this poem from inside the lion's tummy. All right, let me get back here and I'll do it with a loud voice. You just say it along with me and then we'll do it again with no props. All right, here we go. I'm writing these lines from inside a lion and it's rather dark in here. So please excuse my handwriting, which may not be too clear, but this afternoon by the lion's cage, I'm afraid I got too near. So I'm writing these lines from inside a lion, and it's rather dark in here. Did you do it? This is when we've been practicing, so hopefully you're getting to know how to do it. And um, if you don't have any props, this is what it would look like. We luckily have this beautiful lion that somebody drew for me. I can't even remember exactly Woo! who did it. Uh-oh, look out. Okay, this is what it looks like if you don't have anything. You just say, I'm going to be presenting dark in here. I'm writing these lines from inside a lion, and it's rather dark in here. So please, excuse my handwriting, which may not be too clear, but this afternoon, by the lion's cage, I'm afraid I got too near. So I'm writing these lines from inside a lion and it's rather dark in here. Terrific. The line in that one that's a little bit hard is, um, so please excuse my handwriting. That can kind of get garbled in, get all tied together. So you want to make sure you slow that down. So please, you can hit words like that where you give them a little extra punch. So please, excuse my handwriting, which may not be too clear. Um, and you have to practice that several times to get those words to be separated nice and clear. All right, so our new ones for this week are Reginald Clark, who is afraid of the dark, and Melinda May, who ate a monstrous whale. So here's Reginald Clark. 
for this if you have it. You want a teddy bear or a stuffed animal, blankie if you happen to have a blankie, and of course your thummy to suck or to bite on. Hello, I'm Mrs. Colby, and I'm going to be presenting um, Reginald Clark, or no, Afraid of the Dark. I'm going to be presenting Afraid of the Dark. All right, be a little kid. I'm Reginald Clark, and I'm afraid of the dark. So I always insist on the light on and my teddy to hug and my blankie to rub and my thummy to suck or to bite on. Three bedtime stories, two trips to the toilet, two prayers, and five hugs from my mommy. I'm Reginald Clark and I'm afraid of the dark. So please don't close this book on me. Good job. Man, you are getting some of those lines down. Remember the part where it's um, three bedtime stories, two trips to the toilet, two prayers, and five hugs for my mommy. That's the official, but if you don't say it that way, not a single person is going to know. So it's three, two, two, five. Three bedtime stories, then they get up and have to go potty, two trips to the toilet, then they want prayers with their mommy, two prayers, and then hugs. Five hugs from my mommy. So let's start it again. I'm Reginald Clark, and I'm afraid of the dark, so I always insist on the light on. My teddy to hug, and then take a minute to hug it. And my blankie to rub, take a minute to rub. Now my thummy to suck or to bite on. Make it extra loud when you do that. Here we go. Three bedtime stories, two trips to the toilet, two prayers, and five hugs for my mommy. I'm Reginald Clark, and I'm afraid of the dark, so please don't close this book on me. Woo-hoo! Good job! So that's the one we're working on, so keep working on that one. And what you can do is just rewind this tape, play it again, rewind it, play it again, rewind it, play it again. And it gives you lots of times to practice. So you don't have to worry about getting it just when I'm here. And the last one is Melinda May. And remember, she ate a monstrous whale. And we don't have a whale here, but we sure can make people believe that we do. We can go like this. Whoa, like we're looking this whale over. So Melinda May, and we want to ask people, we're telling the story. So we say, have you ever heard of Melinda May? She ate a monstrous whale. She said she could, she said she would. So she started right in at the tail. And everyone said, you're much too small. But that didn't bother Melinda at all. She took little bites and chewed very slow, just like a good girl should. Okay, spin around, here we go, we're growing old. Get your cane out. And in 89 years, she ate that whale because she said she would. Good job being Melinda May and being an old person. So, and the main thing is, is you're a narrator telling the story about Melinda May. All right, let's try it again. Have you ever heard of Melinda May? She ate a monstrous whale, and let's do this. She ate a monstrous whale. She said she could, she said she would, so she started right in at the tail. And everyone said, you're much too small. But that didn't bother Melinda at all. She took little bites and chewed very slow, just like a good girl should. And in 89 years, she ate that whale because she said she would. Good job. And hey, I have to tell you, I talked to Mrs. Choate today. And you know how you can write in? I don't know how she's having you do it, but if you want to be on the morning announcements, you can um, write in or send an email. She is going to put it out there in the news tomorrow and the next days to see if anybody wants to come on and perform poems for her on her chats, chotes, chotes, chat. So when you um, 
watch the news in the morning, listen for her, and see how you can get on, and I want to see some of your performances. She's going to let you be on the morning news. So that would be exciting. Don't be nervous, because it's super fun, and kids love these. I've never met a kid who doesn't love them. So anyway, I would be so excited to see you. I'd be so proud of you to do that. And um, if you need props that you want to make, if you have no props, nobody cares. None of the kids know. And if you have extra people that you want to be in your play, like for Ramoto Dad to do your poem with, that's always fun to do too. So I hope you had a great time today with us working together. I hope you're learning poems and you'll have these forever. If you grow up and have your own kids, you'll be able to go, oh, have I ever told you about Melinda May? And you'll be spouting them off just like Mrs. Colby does. So have a great day. Work on your poems and I can't wait to see you tomorrow.